Lord, if you would speak now. Your people wait. Oh, Lord, empty us that you might fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Then, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, let them be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Certainly it is always a good thing when you have persons around you who understand the call of the Lord. And I just wanted to make this preface in case you sometimes see me and I look like I'm sleeping. My grandmother used to say something about every eye closed. I knew that group was gonna laugh. They know what I'm talking about, amen. But that I'm, my assignment right now is just to watch and see. And as I do that, I find out those who have been called and know what their assignment is and, and joyfully go about doing the work. And I want you to know this morning that God's got a plan for everybody in here. We sometimes miss it because we think sometimes we know everything God can and will do. But let me tell you something. God has some moves we haven't seen yet. Amen. I want to talk to you for just these few minutes from this thought. We're in place for a blessing. We're in place for a blessing. And I ain't preaching about Bethel, and I'm not preaching about the temple, and I, I'm preaching about the miracle on Mercer Street. Amen. And how is it, though, that we sometimes are quick to celebrate the goodness of God when we find ourselves in a good situation or in a good season or in a time of peace and prosperity? But when bad times come, we act as though we don't believe God can be in it. Most of us have heard the saying, to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And probably most of us have experienced it, being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I remember growing up, my mother would warn my brothers and I to not get caught up in anything wrong due to, to being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And for many of you who travel to and from work, you have a set time when you leave your house because you know when the traffic will get bad. And if you don't time it just right, you end up stuck in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sometimes you find yourself the recipient of good fortune for no other reason than you end up in the right place at the right time. You don't do anything for it. You just happen to be at the right place at the right time and something good comes your way. The word this morning that was read for you lets us know that God can bless us where we are. We don't receive some things sometimes because we move away from where God has placed us. There was a famine in the land. The Bible says, besides the first famine in Abraham's day. And this famine can mean trouble or difficulty or hardship or trials. And what it means is that everybody's going to be tested. And it's not will hard times come, but it's how will you respond to them when they come. How many know that saying? You're either coming out of trouble or getting ready to go into some... Yeah, I'm, I'm not preaching yet. We cannot control what comes our way in life. 
but how we respond to it will determine whether we go forward or go backwards. Growth is the product of active resistance. If we never experience resistance, we would never grow. We do not determine growth by what we avoid in life, but by what we overcome in life. Muscles only grow through pressure. And not just pressure, but resistance against that pressure. You see, without challenges and without tests, it would be impossible to measure your growth. And, and I find trouble does one of two things. It makes us more sensitive to God and more aware of our weakness and dependence upon God. Or it makes us dull and insensitive and self-assertive. You see, if famine, trials, and tests brings us a greater revelation of God, then they have served a greater purpose than a life of ease and comfort. See, sometimes we don't want to be pressed, but we want God to use us. We, we don't want to be made uncomfortable, but we got the nerve to say the Lord is working on me. We just don't like it when folk press up against us sometimes. Yet, we want to testify what the Lord has brought us through. Well, <laughs> the highest goal of the believer is to become increasingly and progressively better acquainted with the Lord and to make him known. See, sometimes God's got to make you uncomfortable just to get your attention. Uh, there's a problem with comfortable Christians. They're easy to move in any direction. But I need to be around some folk who don't mind holding up against the pressure. Sometimes when they push on us, we just got to push back. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Uh, see, sometimes we just make it too easy for the devil to have his way. Huh? We sitting up with a remote control in our hand when we ought to have a Bible in our hands and we wonder why hell's always breaking loose in our homes. Uh, you better be careful who you open in the door to. I'm just talking this morning. The greatest revelation of your life is hiding in the greatest trial of your life. Mm, the disciples understood it when they got in the midst of the storm. Come on. And he said, it must be a ghost. But Jesus said, no, it's me. <laughs> huh? Come on. Or, you know, Paul and Silas in prison. Huh? Thought it was all over. But they decided to sing one last song. And look what happened. Chains started popping. Ground started shaking. Before you knew it, everybody in the prison was rocking just like John. Come on, somebody. Oh, don't ask Mary and Martha, because they'll tell you about being at the graveyard one day. Huh? When everybody had given up on their brother Lazarus, uh, and Jesus showed up with a tear in his eye. You didn't know you could make God cry every now and then. Uh -huh. The story goes that he had to call Lazarus by name. He said Lazarus three times. Somebody said if he had to just told him to get up, everything would have got up out the grave. Y'all not with me yet. Oh, God, I'm just talking this morning. Oh, then, then there was the woman with the issue of blood. Y'all remember her, don't you? Spent all of her money. Come on now. Blue Cross and Blue Shield wouldn't help her no more. She used all of her little money up, all of her savings up. Huh? And everybody kept wondering, why don't you go sit down somewhere? But she had this profound statement. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Somebody in here know what I'm talking about. Oh, God, stop running from your trials and tests. 
Uh, I'm looking for some folk to run in the fire instead of running out of the fire. Christians ought to all be first responders. We ought to be the first one to run in when trouble comes. Tell somebody, I got the solution for your problem. Uh, come on now. Tell them we put fires out and start new ones, huh? Oh, y'all don't want to go there today. Oh, God. But the word says Isaac sowed in that land. He broke through, y'all. He sowed his seed in time of famine with nothing to encourage his efforts except the promise from God that said, I will bless thee. You see, he had no evidence, but he had a whole lot of confidence. I would much rather be with a group of folk who don't know all the rules, but they just know when trouble comes, I've only got to call one name, and it's the name of Jesus. I, leave me with the folk that don't know the whole word. They just kind of put a couple scriptures together. It's in there. It might not be where they said it was, but and they said Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Uh, it said in Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Uh, that means it's a lodging place. Huh? It tells us that God can bless you anywhere. God is not limited or governed by the economy. It's nothing that goes on down here that God cannot adjust. Can I help somebody? You think that the one in the White House is calling the shots. Come on now, he, he might be giving you a headache, but don't you forget, you serve a living, a true and living God. His term is never up. You can vote for whoever you want to vote for, but the day after the election, God will still be on the throne. Mm. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we miss the harvest. The blessing God has for us because we quit sowing in times of famine. Trouble comes so we stop reading the word. We have a rough week so, uh, you know, it's Sunday. It's my day off, mother. <laughs> I'm going to watch Jake's on the TV and I get my church then and... Uh, I got to stay home and get myself together. And the truth of the matter is, if you leave home sometimes, maybe you'd find things coming together. But we, we, we stop our prayer life. We stop reading the words. We, we stop giving. We stop sowing. We stop serving. We stop working. But here, Isaac sowed. Come on, y'all. In time of trouble. Huh? Many times at the point of our breakthrough, we break down. Because instead of praising God and demonstrating our faith in his promises, we begin to murmur and doubt and complain. And we let folk get in our ear that ought not be anywhere near us. And we become discouraged and we begin to back up. Oh, God, we often wonder why God is taking so long to fulfill his word to us. Most of the time, the reason is because we take so long getting into position for the blessing. Who told you you can be anywhere doing anything with anybody? <laughs> I had to pause for the effect. Somebody started this holler, Jody was here, but we. You got to be in the right place for God to bless you. God does not drop his blessings in the middle of confusion and in the middle of mess. You worried about who getting blessed and you're not getting blessed 
they took your blessing while you sitting. I'm going to give you this and take my seat. Y'all know I don't preach long. Oh, Jesus. Just like the quarterback tends not to throw the ball until the receiver is in the intended position. God will sometimes not release that blessing until you get where you were supposed to be. Huh? Let me give you these few little things. Y'all be done told him he didn't give us no points. First thing you got to do is you got to go where God tells you to go. Geographically obey God's direction. Huh? You must be where God told you to be in order to get what he promised. You want to get paid, but you don't never show up for work. You can tell somebody about all the benefits, but you can't even turn the machine on, or you don't even know. The Bible said it this way in 1 Kings 17, 3 to 4. Get thee hence and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I've commanded the ravens to feed thee there. You see, God has a commanded blessing looking for you. It may have flown over your head a dozen times, but it won't land until you get in position. What is that thing, song they sing? God's got a blessing with my name on it. Uh, uh, y'all, y'all. See, y'all didn't really know the song. I knew the song. Y'all didn't. Get, get, go where God tells you to go, church. Huh? Then, then you got to believe this is your time for your blessing. Huh? To everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You must believe it's harvest time for you. You got to believe it is time for salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity, miracles. You sow knowing there is a time element involved. You reap believing that time element has been fulfilled. You got to stand up, put your head up, poke your chest out, and act like it's your turn. Uh, sometimes we're too polite. As Christians, you know, some church folk just got so much syrup. <laughs> they slippery and sticky at the same time. I mean, come on now. When it's my time for my blessing, please don't be in the way. I would hate for you to tell somebody, you know, pastor knock folk down trying to get his, but I want my blessing. And when the Lord shows me it's time, <laughs> it's time. Then, then, see, I'm going through this quick, so you'll never notice I gave you more than three points. You got you to gotta give God the latitude to use whatever means he chooses to get the blessing to you. Huh? Jesus healed by many different methods. To reject the method he was using at the time would have been to reject the healing. It was a dirty bird that delivered Elijah's food, but he ate it. <clears throat> y'all, y'all get that one when you go home. I said it was a dirty bird. I could preach just about that, John. It was a dirty bird <laughs> that brought his meal. But he knew God could use whatever he wanted to use. Hallelujah. And it would be for his good. Can I tell y'all, don't get caught up with what it looks like. If it's your blessing, get your blessing. I don't really care who brings it, just bring it. I, oh God. Then, then you, you, you must do what God says to do. Huh? Whatever he says, do it. Most folk miss the key to that first miracle at the wedding Cana of Galilee. Huh? God could have filled up whatever he wanted to fill up. He could have turned water into wine and wine into milk and the milk into something stronger than wine and on and on and on. But here is the truth. 
his mother spoke, he told, said, whatever he says do, do it. You want him to bless you? Do what he told you to do. You're tired of your body racked with pain? Do what he told you to do. Oh, my God. Whether he tells you to dip seven times, borrow empty vessels, not a few, make this valley full of ditches, take away the stone, fill the water pots, step into the Jordan, walk around the walls of Jericho, whatever he tells you to do. And then, and then I'm done now. I'm really done. I'm really done. If you count, this is the fifth point, so you ain't got to tell on nobody. I'm telling on myself. Church, I believe you are in place to be blessed. So what you got to do, and this is the key point, and I'm going to leave you alone. You got to praise God as though you're already being blessed. Come on, somebody. This praise tells God you believe his word and that you refuse to be hemmed in by your circumstances. Huh? This kind of praise tells God I, I might be in prison, but my praise can still reach heaven. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. You might be covered up in debt or sickness or family troubles, but your praise can break through and reach heaven. There are blessings that are yours by design, commanded blessings. God has divinely ordered them for you, but you're not going to get them till you get in position. I'm closing with this. There are people who have a call of God on their life and a degree of anointing, but they will never walk in the fullness of that anointing and manifestation of that call because they fail to put themselves in position for a blessing. Some folk won't submit themselves to a spiritual head. The anointing and power of God follows order. It flows down from the head. If you don't like what the head is doing, pray for the head. But keep your hands off the head. The Bible says, oh good God Almighty, touch not my anointing and do my prophet. Oh, y'all know that one. As you position yourself under a spiritual head, then the anointing, the blessing, the favor that is on that head will flow down to you. Is there anybody here? Hallelujah. God tells Isaac not to go down to Egypt. Don't you go to Camden. You go to Philly, don't you go back to Millville. Okay, I'm not going back. But, but so, in the very place where I put you, huh? When we obey God, we get ourselves in position for supernatural blessings. There is no devil, demon, imp, I'm not going to call the other names this first Sunday. That can block your blessing. If God promised it, he'll do just what he said. Stop running from dogs that got a bark and no teeth. Tell the devil, get behind me. Even if the devil is dressed for church, get be. Life is hard on its own. Hurt is going to come whether you planned it or not. You don't have to do nothing wrong to have your heart broken. some things in life you ain't ready for. 
you can pray and pray and read and read, but can I tell you something? There's a hurt that will break your stuff up. All the faith you could imagine having won't be enough. But that's when true believers plant our feet on the solid rock. And the rock is Jesus. Make up your mind, I'm not going to be moved. I'm keeping my hand on the plow. Push me, pull me, do whatever you want. But until he cracks the sky, I'm going to plant where he put me. We ought not be stubborn with each other, but let the devil do whatever he wants. You've been given the power, my brothers and sisters, huh? That if you just obey God, stay where he puts you. There's a blessing that can't nobody get but you. It ain't no AME blessing, or no Kojic blessing, or no God in Christ, or no Baptist or missionary. There, there's only one God and one blessing. And when you make up your mind, this is where God put me. I don't care who sent me. I don't care who signed my appointment. But I'm staying right where God put me. And that's where my blessing comes from. Stand to your feet. I don't, I don't know who we might be talking to this morning. But there really is a blessing that's just for you. Somebody in here this morning heard from the doctor and you haven't told nobody. Can I tell you something? The Lord can heal you before you even get the prescription filled. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Y'all excuse me if I do anything out of order. Uh, you might be going through what seems to be just endless darkness. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And you just don't think you'll see your way out. Can I tell you something? God has already decided your blessing. And there's nothing that he won't do to see you happy. God loves you. And God's going to bless you. The question is, are you ready for it? I said, are you ready for it? If you're ready for your blessing, just wave your hand one time and be a witness. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but this is really about believing you don't have to go to another church and then another church and then another, trying to find your place. Your place is where God has you. The question is what you're going to do with it. If you're in here this morning and you know in your heart, You've never really accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to know that time is shorter than you think. And I want to offer you today a new life. It's nothing I got. It's nothing the church has. But it's what God desires for you. So if there's one in here this morning and you've tried a whole lot of other stuff and now you want to try Jesus, I, I invite you to come up here. Just come in the aisle and come up. Because I want you to know something. It is no secret. But the Lord will fix it for you even today. If you're in here this morning and you just want to 
have a little more faith. Well, faith comes through hearing. Hallelujah. So if you're in here this morning, don't be discouraged because you haven't seen anybody else come. You come on up here. I'm here. Reverend Regina's here. Reverend Cece. If you just, and the three of us can tell you, we, we, we know some stuff. Sinners saved by grace. Good God Almighty. Oh, God. And you know, I've been praying for you. She said, I'm coming. She keep coming. Keep coming. That's right. Come on. Come on. That's right. Keep coming. I just believe there's some more folk back there, though, that, huh? You just want to try? Praise God. All right. You came, and now you brought your wife. There you go. I told y'all about bringing folks out the house. Who else is out here this morning? Come on. Somebody even came in this morning with a thought on their mind that when the preacher opens up the altar, I'm going to go and try to meet Jesus. Anyone in here this morning just want to try to meet Jesus? Come on. Praise God. Praise God. 